every substance is made up of atoms. An atom has no electric charge. So an atom of a substance is ordinarily neutral. This is because the number of positive electric charges and negative electric charges on an atom are equal. But how is it possible for opposite charges to exist in the same atom? Many scientists have studied the structure of the atom and advanced their theories about it. The theory proposed by Dalton, Thomas and Rutherford gained a lot of importance in their times. We shall learn all three of them in this chapter. So, let us first move on to the theory proposed by Dalton. It is called Dalton's Atomic Theory. In the year 1808, John Dalton, an English chemist, proposed the atomic theory. His theory is considered to be the fundamental theory about the composition of matter. He proposed that matter consists of very small particles which he named atoms. An atom is a hard, solid ball and it is indivisible. But Dalton's theory failed to explain about the positive and negative charges on an atom. Hence, it was not able to explain many of the properties of substances. Now, let us move on to the other theory proposed by Thomson. It is called Thomson's Theory. In 1897, J.J. Thomson, the British physicist, proposed a different theory. He compared an atom to a watermelon. As you all know, a watermelon has a red edible part with black seeds in it. He proposed that an atom has a positively charged part like the red part of a watermelon and negatively charged particles like the seeds which he named electrons. According to Thomson's theory, as the positive and negative charges are equal, the atom as a whole doesn't have any resultant charge, that is, it is neutral. His greatest contribution was to prove by experimentation the existence of the negatively charged particles or electrons in an atom. For this discovery, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1906. Although this theory explained why an atom is neutral, it was an incomplete theory in other ways. To better understand the shortcomings of Thomson's theory, Ernest Rutherford conducted an experiment. Let us study it. Rutherford's Theory Rutherford, in his experiment, bombarded a very thin layer of gold with positively charged alpha rays. He found that most of these rays, which travel at great velocity, pass through the gold sheet without encountering any obstacles. However, a few turned back from the sheet. He found this remarkable. For him, it was as miraculous as if a bullet had turned back after colliding with a tissue paper. This following activity will help us to understand it. Try this. Stand near a barbed wire fence and throw marbles towards the fence. A majority of these marbles will pass right through the fence to the other side. But just a few of the marbles will hit the wire and return. What is the reason? Actually, there is a lot of space between the two wires of a fence. So, most of the time, the marbles will pass through. But at times, the marble strikes the wire fence and returns. Based on this experiment, Ernest Rutherford proposed his famous theory. According to him, since many alpha A particles pass through the gold sheet, the atom consists mainly of empty space. The part from which the positively charged particles are turned back is positively charged but very small in size as compared to the empty space. These inferences gave rise to Rutherford's theory of the structure of atoms for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. 
Let us sum it up. Rutherford's theory proposes that 1. The nucleus at the center of the atom has positive charge. Most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus. 2. The negatively charged electrons revolve around the nucleus in specific orbits. 3. In comparison with the size of the atom, the nucleus is very, very small. Let us study stages of the discovery of the constituents of an atom. We have studied how different scientists gave different models and different theories in the course of time. The first one is Dalton's model proposed in the year 1808. According to him, atom was a hard and solid sphere. The second one is Thomson's model proposed in the year 1897. According to this theory, as the positive and negative charges are equal, the atom as a whole does not have any resultant charge. The third one is Rutherford's model proposed in the year 1911. According to this theory, 1. The nucleus at the center of the atom has a positive charge. Most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus. 2. The negatively charged electrons revolve around the nucleus in specific orbits. 3. In comparison with the size of the atom, the nucleus is very, very small. Coming to the constituents of an atom. Protons, neutrons and electrons are the fundamental particles in the structure of an atom. The particles in the nucleus of an atom are called nucleons. They are of two types, protons and neutrons. Protons. The proton is the positively charged fundamental particle and is located in the nucleus. Its positive charge is of the same magnitude as that of the electron's negative charge. Neutron. This fundamental particle is in the nucleus. The neutron does not have any charge. Except hydrogen, the nuclei of all atoms contain neutrons. The mass of a neutron is approximately equal to that of a proton. 3. Electrons This is a negatively charged particle. Electrons revolve around the nucleus of an atom in specific orbits. They have specific energy depending on the orbit in which they revolve. The mass of an electron is negligible as compared to that of a proton or neutron. Thus, the mass of an atom depends on the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Let us try to understand what makes an atom electrically neutral. The part of the atom outside the nucleus consists of negatively charged electrons and a lot of empty space. The total negative charge of all the electrons outside the nucleus is equal to the total positive charge in the nucleus. That makes the atom electrically neutral. Coming to the atomic number. It is represented by Z. The number of electrons or protons in an atom is called the atomic number of that atom. The atomic number of an atom helps us to know the number of protons or electrons in it. Look at the figures. The hydrogen nucleus has only one proton around which revolves one electron. Hence, its atomic number is 1. That is, Z is equal to 1. So, tell me, in the helium atom there are two protons, two neutrons and two electrons revolving in the orbit. What is its atomic number? Its Z is equal to 2. And now, looking at the figure, tell me the value of Z for oxygen atom. Yes, it is Z is equal to 6. Now, let us move on to the next concept. Atomic mass number. We have seen that the mass of an atom is concentrated in its nucleus. This gives us the atomic mass number, that is, A. Atomic mass number is equal to the number of protons, P, plus number of neutrons, N, in the nucleus. 
Example, a lithium atom contains three protons and four neutrons. Its atomic mass number is equal to P plus N is equal to 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. So students, tell me the atomic mass number of sodium atom which has 11 protons and 12 neutrons. Its atomic mass number is equal to 11 plus 12 is equal to 23. When writing the symbol of an element, its atomic number and atomic mass number are also written. Example, atomic mass number of carbon is 12. So it is written as a superscript to the left of the symbol and the atomic number is 6, it is written as a subscript to the left of the symbol. Similarly, for oxygen, it is written as and for hydrogen respectively. Now, we shall discuss isotopes. In nature, in the case of certain elements, we find some atoms which have the same atomic number but a different atomic mass number. Such atoms of an element are called isotopes of that element. The nuclei of the atoms of different isotopes of an element have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Example, 1. Hydrogen has three isotopes. They are called hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. The lightest element, hydrogen, contains one proton and no neutron. The nucleus of deuterium contains one proton and one neutron, while the nucleus of tritium contains one proton and two neutrons. So they have the same atomic number, that is one, but their mass numbers are one, two and three respectively. Two, carbon has two isotopes. Three, chlorine has two isotopes. Generally, the chemical properties of all isotopes of an element are the same. However, some isotopes have special properties and so these have some practical applications. Example 1. Isotopes of uranium are used as fuel in atomic reactors. 2. Isotopes of cobalt are used in the treatment of cancer. 3. Isotopes of iodine are used in the treatment now, of Now, we shall learn formation of ions. Electrons revolve around the nucleus in a specific orbit. Of these, the electrons in the outermost orbit take part in chemical reactions. If the outermost orbit is incomplete, then there is a possibility of the give and take or sharing of electrons during a chemical reaction. During a chemical reaction, Metals tend to give electrons, whereas non-metals tend to receive electrons. Example, sodium atom has 11 electrons, of which 2 are in the first orbit, 8 in the second orbit, and only 1 in the third orbit, that is, the outermost orbit. Hence, the outermost orbit of sodium is incomplete. When, during a chemical reaction, the sodium atom gives away the outermost electron, the number of protons in the nucleus becomes greater than the number of electrons. The sodium atom now has a positive electric charge by giving away one electron. Similarly, even magnesium becomes positively charged on giving two electrons. Thus, we can say that sodium and magnesium are metals. On the other hand, a chlorine atom has 17 electrons. Of these, 2 are in the first orbit, 8 in the second and 7 in the third orbit. Thus, the outermost orbit is incomplete. To complete it, it must receive one electron. After doing so, the number of protons in the nucleus, that is 17, becomes one less than the number of electrons, that is 18, in the orbit. So, chlorine atom gets a negative electric charge. Similarly, even oxygen accepts two electrons and becomes negatively charged. Thus, ions are formed by the give and take of electrons. 
Now moving on to valency. Valency is the capacity of an element for combining with other elements. Every element has a definite capacity for combining. The valency of any element is compared with that of hydrogen which is considered to be 1. The valency of an element is always a whole number. The valency of sodium and potassium is equal to that of hydrogen, that is 1. Oxygen and calcium have a combining capacity twice that of hydrogen. Hence, their valency is 2. The valency of nitrogen is 3 and that of silicon is 4. We have already learnt that atoms of different elements combine with each other to form molecules of compounds. In these cases, it is necessary to know the valences of those elements. Let us study the following examples. 1. Sodium combines with chlorine and forms sodium chloride. Here, the valencies of both sodium and chlorine are 1. 2. Magnesium combines with chlorine and forms magnesium chloride. Here, the valency of magnesium is 2 and chlorine is 1. 3. Aluminium combines with chlorine and forms aluminium chloride. Here, the valency of aluminium is 3 and that of chlorine is 1.